Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And this is a man. And this is a horse. But when you combine the two, you're left with a beautiful, magical, majestic, awe-inspiring centaur. Whenever I start a project, I like to have a little look around on the internet to see what other people have done so I can get a little inspiration and potentially steal someone else's ideas to pass off as my own. And while there isn't a great deal of reverse centaur artwork out there, I did find this picture right here and it really spoke to me. Do it. Start a fire. Burn it all. And thus, the reverse centaur was born. Now the first step, of course, is building the bones of my backwards horseman, which mostly involves cutting a couple strips of wire to size, guessing at the lengths because I've already forgotten that sheet of paper behind my hands with the exact length drawn on top. I'll then wind the wire on and through itself until we've traveled back in time to the summer of 2020 and get stick bugged. Then I can bend the bottoms forward for future feet and start building up the bulk of the body with aluminium foil. By building up the body with foil, it'll reduce the amount of clay I need to use, thus ensuring I'm not spending a fortune making a three-dimensional meme. Otherwise, once I've got enough of the body covered, I can start to add the pale, fleshy, flesh-toned clay on top. The goal at this point isn't anatomical accuracy, but rather it's just to get the majority of the metally bits covered with something. Clay doesn't adhere super well to the smooth armature wire, so I've wound more wire around the original bony bits to help give the clay something else to hold on to. Once all the wires have been covered, I can begin thickening up the sections and building out the baseline musculature and body composition. Mostly this just involves making sure he's dummy thick. Unfortunately, or I guess depending on what your kink is, pants are going to be one of the last things I add, so you're going to have to look at this double-cheeked monstrosity for some time. If it makes you feel any better though, this is roughly 30 hours of work that I've boiled down into a syrupy 15 minute video. So in the grand scheme of things, you'll barely have any emotional scarring by the end. I, on the other hand, I like to build up my bodies and layers, adding clay here and there until I've got the right proportions, at which point I'll finally start to carve the detail in as sort of the final step. Now, given that the majority of my models are horribly proportioned and borderline nightmare fuel, I don't necessarily recommend this approach, as your mileage may vary. However, I'm stuck in my ways and I refuse to change. That being said, I've now built up enough of the body that I can start to get into the finer detailing. I'll make sure the arms are nice and muscular, as well as positioned appropriately for a forward forelimb to sprint. The back legs are, obviously, much larger and stretched into an impressive downward-facing dog, so I want to make sure those muscles are incredibly well-defined and look like they're being stretched to their limits. After all, if I focus intently on making sure his hamstrings are built like a bag of ropes, then I can pretend to ignore the Ken doll-esque backside that's been staring at me for days. With the limbs looking adequately swole, I can begin thickening up the torso, starting with the shoulders to allow for a future horse half to be attached, as well as give some extra thickness to his lower back and delineate his spinal column. I happen to think a lot of YouTube sculptors get too focused on making sure their characters have ridiculous six-pack abs, whereas I like to give my creations a more attainable paunch. He is, however, holding a hell of a lot of weight on his arms, so he's going to need some pretty impressive pecs and strong wingsuit lats. Finally, I can give him a little belly button and a final smoothing and it's into the oven to bake before drilling some holes between his shoulders so I can fit a length of wire that I can then wrap in more aluminium foil. This foil then can be covered in a thick layer of brown clay. I'll then blend the clay into the already baked body to get me a nice seamless joint, but I won't worry too much about the color variation since I can probably fix this later with a little paint. I'll then pinch and pull and build up the tip until I've got an adequately long neck with a horse head on top. I'll start to blend it all together and get an initial horse head shape before adding some proxy ears to help me with positioning and proportion as I build up the rest of the horse head. Even with the ears in place though, it'll take me more than a few tries to figure out how to make a horse head because horses are hella weird. Eventually I got frustrated enough that I gave up on the head and started to refine the shape of the horse torso, marking out the shoulders and making sure the muscles of the neck and chest were well defined and blended cleanly. Then it's back to the head to pop some eyeballs in place, build up the area around the eyebrow and snoot as well as cut a little horse mouth into the front. Much like the rest of the horse, the mouth was frustrating since no matter how many times I tried to make it not look weird, it looked weird. Then I looked up a bunch of pictures of horses and realized that their mouths are weird and mine was fine. 
At this point I can then use my ball stylus to roll some lumpy textures into the flatter sections of the horse's face and round some of the neck muscles before popping the ears off to make them into their final form. To do this I'll simply squish the proxy ears into flat oblong blobs of clay then fold them back on themselves, stick them back behind the eyes, then blend them in. I wanted to give my horse half some front legs so I'll cut two equal lengths of wire and making sure that the camera is focused on the hammed up half horse in the background, I'll bend both wires at the same time to make sure their joints line up. I can then raise my hand slightly so the camera focuses properly and snip away the excess leaving me with two extended horse arms that I can then stick into the still soft clay of the horse torso, or the horso if you will. Then each of these arms gets wrapped in a layer of brown clay, building up the muscle and blending it into the horse so, as well as refining the shape of the hooves and adding all the lumpy little bits that make up a horse's leg. I'll then smooth out the muscle, add little skin folds here and there and separate the hoof from the shin. With that the horse legs are looking good, but my horse so isn't nearly muscly enough so I'll add lots of little lumps of clay and noodly bits to the shoulders and back until they're looking adequately beefy. Although beefy is for cows, and according to some unseemly websites, horse meat is called cheveline, so until he's looking adequately cheveline I guess? Finally, I'll finish off the head by adding some eyelids, and that's the horse half pretty much finished. All I need to do at this point is give the body some texture, which I'll do by way of copious amounts of isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol will soften the topmost layer of clay, smoothing out some of the unsightly tool marks and fingerprints, while the brush will leave lots of barely perceptible brush strokes that are perfect for faking super fine horse hair. Now, I've been staring down the barrel of this reverse Centaur's exhaust pipe for the better part of a week and it's time to cover it up. I'd considered a pair of tidy whities or some polka dot boxers, but eventually settled for some good old fashioned jorts. I have rolled out some bright blue, blue jean blue clay that I'll use to piece together my jorts. Once I've got all the pieces together and covered the entirety of my centaur's backside, I realized that these shorts weren't nearly short enough, so I'll cut away a fair amount until I've got a bit of cheek peeking out the bottom. Then I can blend and smooth all the sections together. Otherwise, all I need now is to figure out how I'm going to texture my jorts. Fortunately, I happen to have the perfect fabric within reach. In a rare twist of fortune, I happen to be wearing pants today, which provides me with the perfect texture. Once my jorts are jeaned up, I can add the stitching around the waist and down the fly in the front, then using lots of little wormy dealies, I can start adding wrinkles and folds everywhere I think a wrinkle or fold would fall. A good trick here is to put on a pair of jorts and strike this exact same pose in the mirror so you've got a good point of reference. I'll follow everything up with another jean texturing to blend the wrinkles in, then I can attach a couple back pockets I cut out off camera. Same as the seams and wrinkles, the pockets get some texturing, and I'm ready to add the ripped fabric around the legs, which I'll do by pulling at the clay with a pair of tweezers. With the jorts done, I'm ready to add the mane. I'll do this by building up a couple layers of black clay texturing as I go. By building up the layers, I can make sure that the lower layers get a decent amount of detail and the topmost layers will help to give my mane a nice flowy effect. Otherwise, once the horse head is haired up, I can add the finishing touches, hands and feet. To make the feet, I'll squish some big blobs of clay onto the exposed wire at the bottom, refining the shape as I go. I can then cut some toes into the front and remove the excess off the side, then using lots of poking and prodding and finagling, I can work my toes into toe-like little things. I'll then add some gnarly toenails to the tips of each toe and finish off the foot with some balls blended in to make my ankles. For the hands, I'll start with another little lump of hand-sized clay that I can squish a set of four fingers and a thumb onto. I'll then blend all this together and clean up the seams, then using my ball stylus, I'll add all the necessary lumps and knuckles, followed by wrinkles and fingernails. And with that, this reverse horseman is finished and ready for a glow up. I'll start by masking off the blue jeans since I'm going to be sponging and spraying and I'd rather not have to clean up the blue later. I'm going to be shading the skin tones with washes but I found that they don't adhere well to unpainted clay so I'll start by laying down a pale fleshy flesh tone over the pale fleshy flesh colored clay. The sponge will also add a little extra texture that I think works well for skin. 
I'll then crack out my airbrush to begin building up the darker flesh tone that I want to layer over the lighter tones I applied with the sponge. While I've got the airbrush out, I'll also add a slightly darker coat to the horse and head, then paint a nice black gradient over the nose, around the eyes, and along the snoot. Then I can completely paint the hooves black and build up a nice smooth blend into the brown of the legs. To add some contrast and texture to the skin tones, I'll sponge once more over the surface, applying a little dusting to the topmost layer, as well as doing the same thing for the horse half, but, you know, with brown instead. To create the joint between man and horse, I'll stipple some browns and lighter browns together to create a sharper edge that I think looks better than a soft blended gradient. I'll paint the main black to give it a nice uniform base coat, then I can aggressively dry brush a couple coats of slightly lighter charcoals and dark grays before adding some streaks of light gray for highlights. Finally, it's time to peel the tape off the jorts and apply a thick coat of dark blue wash to set my initial dark blue base coat and set the shading and all the wrinkles and recesses. Then once that's had a chance to dry, I'll hit the Daisy Dukes with several aggressive coats of progressively lighter blue dry brushings before gently tapping the tips of the topmost wrinkles with a very light blue to show the weathered denim. Finally, I can come back with some washed out whites to paint all the torn fabric and add some extra heavy weathering along the seams and the wrinkles. Once the jorts are looking well worn, I'll use my finest tip brush to add some thin brown hairs along the forearms and the shins and some teeny tiny hairs on the toes and feet. Then some watered down brown paint stippled onto the chest and belly will add some extra body hair. Now at this point you might be wondering why I would add a belly button but no nipples. Well, I thought I'd try something a little bit different today so I waited until last and mixed up some terracotta paint with a bit of flexible paste. Then using my ball stylus I'll poke my nips into place. And honestly these are some of the best nipples I've ever made. <laughs> what am I doing? To make his hairy armpits, I figured I could repurpose these tufts of grass. They're a little blonde for my purposes, so I'll blast them with the airbrush to make them a little bit darker, then I can dip them in a little glue and stick them in place. Last but not least, once absolutely everything else is finished, I'll go back to the eyes and paint them so they are looking as oddly unsettling as a horse's eyes are, then I can coat them in a layer of UV resin so they're nice and shiny. And with that, we're all done here and onto the glamour shots. As always, a massive thank you to the fine folk of Patreon who continue to support me despite my posting update photos of seemingly random headless dudes in compromising positions, and a special hey how are you to the newest of them, Kayla Smith, Bradelaide, Alex, everyone knows your nan, probably Brendan, Elizabeth H, Andra Bell, Studi Kokar, Keek O, Mateus Dalamita, Huey, Zoe, and Great Griebel's Wacky Workshop. You are the ill-fitting denim jorts that help to hide the turd pipe that is this channel. I hope you like this because I think it's one of my finest pieces of work to date. If however you're like my non-platonic roommate and you don't think it deserves a place of honor on the mantelpiece, then I don't know. Opinions are like buttholes and this centaur doesn't have one. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.